If you are new here to Geekdom 101, make sure you subscribe and enable all notifications by hitting the bell. And also make sure your devices have notifications for YouTube turned on so you don't miss a single video when they drop. On this channel, we discuss all things Dragon Ball movies, manga, and anime, and much more. And I thank you for eight years of support. Now let's get to the video. After a three month hiatus, the Dragon Ball Super manga has at long last returned with chapter 88, the beginning of a brand new story arc, the Dragon Ball Super superhero story arc covering the prequel events going into the events of Dragon Ball Super Superhero, which came out earlier in 2022. Not only is this a new arc in Dragon Ball Super, but a totally new direction as I can safely tell you that there is not a single Dragon Ball Super manga chapter that is anywhere in any way similar to this one. This is the most unique chapter that Toyotoro has ever put out and a completely different experience from the Moro and Granola arcs which focused a lot on the development of Goku and Vegeta but now we're shifting to the Earth and we're shifting to Goten and Trunks. The boys, them boys, are now getting the focus and it's going to be a fun time going into the events of Dragon Ball Super Superhero but first they want to connect the superhero story to the granola arc story so if you remember in chapter 87 at the end of the granola arc frieza shows up and debuts his brand new transformation black frieza and one shots true ultra instinct goku and ultra ego vegeta and then Whis goes to pick them up and carry them back to beerus's planet this whole first few pages which by the way for the first time in Dragon Ball Super, we actually have colored pages during the first run of the manga in V-Jump. This has never happened before for Dragon Ball Super. So again, we're treated to some new things that were kind of unexpected, but I digress. They tie everything together by having Goku and Vegeta reuniting with Beerus and Whis, with Vegeta specifically wanting to get stronger, strong enough to be able to battle Black Frieza, which is literally what's going to lead to the eventual recruitment of Broly to train with them therefore connecting it to the dragon ball super superhero film the manga then shifts its focus to earth where we have the beginning of a new story featuring goten and trunks finally being aged up like what they were in the dragon ball super superhero movie becoming superheroes named Saiyaman X1 and Saiyaman X2, which is an honest tribute to the original Grey Saiyaman. In fact, this entire manga chapter felt like the Dragon Ball Z Great Saiyaman filler stuff from Dragon Ball Z episode 200 to about 207. We had a bunch of, you know, stuff in the anime that showed us Grey Saiyaman Gohan becoming a hero. Here, Goten Trunks are trying to pattern after Gohan and become heroes themselves. And yes, I know, Saiyaman was in the manga too, but the anime added a bunch of slice of life segments that were not in the manga, and this chapter is obviously inspired by the anime version not the manga so goten and trunks take out some criminals at the beginning establishing them as new superheroes protecting the world but what i was expecting to be honest with y'all is I thought we were going to get an explanation as to how they would eventually become the Grey Sandman 1 and 2. I was wondering if they were going to actually tell us what led to them making the choice to become superheroes. It's somewhat implied here, but I thought we were going to actually see them gain their costumes and things of that nature. Instead, Toyotaro makes the choice to get us right into the action and seeing them doing heroic things from the get-go. I think your enjoyment of this arc, or at least these chapters, is going to really depend on how you feel about the Grey Sandman arc in Dragon Ball Z. Because I'll be honest, when I was a kid, I wasn't too big into these episodes, but as I grew older, I learned to appreciate them more. If you're one of those Dragon Ball fans who is like obsessive over Vegeta or, you know, things like that, and you want to see Broly and that's all you care about... That might not be what you get here. Lots of slice of life. This is very much drawing out that corny side of Toriyama, that corny side of Dragon Ball that the Grey Sandman arc kind of encapsulated. But let's keep it real, yo. Dragon Ball Super has been the Goku and Vegeta show. We haven't even seen 
Goten and Trunks in who knows how long. In the manga, that is. So for me, this is refreshing, and the fact they're going to focus on Piccolo and Gohan later in the arc is going to be cool as well. So I have no complaints about this direction as of right now. We'll see where it goes. So basically, Goten and Trunks are trying to solve crimes. They hear about robberies and things like that. Goten gets yelled at by Chi-Chi, somebody else who has been very, very underused in Dragon Ball Super, in my opinion. We see her return, and we see the return of a very familiar classic Dragon Ball trope, and that is the Flying Nimbus, the King Tone, after who knows how long I lost track, is now back in the Dragon Ball story. Goten does use it. Meanwhile, Trunks, on the other hand, tries to get a wristwatch to transform them from their normal forms into the Sandman X1 form, but he doesn't want to ask his mom because he's keeping this superhero stuff a secret from his family, so instead he wants to go ask Pilaf to help him out with it instead. Goten and Trunks are trying to keep their secret identity a secret even from their own family members, so this whole arc is already coming off, much like the movie, as a tribute to Western superheroes. That's what Grey Sandman was, that's what this is, and it feels a heck of a lot more more like the Amazing Spider-Man or some comic like that or Into the Spider-Verse the movie than it even does a Dragon Ball story. And like I said, I have no complaints because A, I grew up a huge Spider-Man fan and I still have tons and tons and tons of Spider-Man comics and B, it's different from the Granola and Moro arcs which were kind of getting long in the tooth with the way they were being written and I'm happy we're changing directions to eventually get back to Goku and Vegeta in the future. Now, moving on with the story. There's a scene with Trunks and his grandparents, Dr. Brief, and his wife. And this scene was used by Toyotaro to illustrate the fact that Trunks really does not want his family to find out about him being a superhero. And we find out that Trunks' grandma one day wants to meet a superhero because she never has. Even though she has been very close friends with Goku, who has saved the Earth a multitude of times and is a real superhero. But I know what they're talking about. They're talking about the Western superhero, not Goku, who is an Eastern superhero. I covered this in a recent video I did with Jordan the Dragon Lee, discussing Goku and Gohan as main characters and how they differ from each other because they are symbolic of Western versus Eastern heroes. And I love that video, and I really want y'all to check it out because I really think you will like that video. We also get introduced to this dinosaur who seems to recognize Trunks, and they briefly discuss, no pun intended, how Pan is trying to learn how to fly, and they're sort of, again, laying the groundwork. She just started kindergarten, and she's learning how to fly, which is things that we see in the superhero film. This is just sort of connecting it. Did they have to do this? Probably not, but it's not like it's annoyingly something they had to put in there. Also, we see that there are Capsule Corporation robots running away from zombies, and that, of course, plays into the whole upcoming Dr. Hedo stuff, which I'll talk about shortly. So the next day at Capsule Corp, Trunks meets up with Pilaf, and he gets the new wristwatch. But Goten's is not ready yet. There's also some subtle hints about Pilaf stealing the Dragon Balls, so that's interesting. And it's kind of fun that Trunks and Pilaf have formed this weird friendship. It's unexpected, but kind of cool. So Bulma appears, and Trunks avoids the question. So then we move on to the high school portion of the story, which I was going to call it the Amazing Saiyaman, because that's really how this comes off, and that's not a criticism. I like it. It's different. Trunks and Goten are in high school. On his way to school, he's riding a bike, very similar to how Gohan rode his bike in the Dragon Ball Z We Got a Power intro for the Boo Saga. It's definitely an homage, and there's no question at all, you can't even deny it, that Toyotaro was so enamored by those episodes that he based a lot of it. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the students at Blue Howl High School. A lot of folks have been talking about these new characters, and I have too. These new classmates resemble, and it's just, it's obvious to me, they resemble Miles Morales and Gwen from Into the Spider-Verse. Now, a lot of folks have also been commenting on the fact that there are basically black people in this manga chapter that are drawn more realistic as opposed to how Toriyama drew, for example, 
Staff Officer Black back in Dragon Ball, which was kind of a caricature and very controversial. I covered this in my Red Ribbon Army Explained video, so check that out for more information on the history of Black and kind of where that came from. But I totally see where people are getting this from because it makes sense. Um, Assistant Black in Dragon Ball... It's a very dated look. It's very much a caricature. And while I don't know for sure if Toriyama is racist, a lot of Japanese people are. I'd hate to say it. They're very xenophobic towards not just blacks, but in some cases, all of the West, especially Americans, depending on the person, how old they are, and their background. So I can't sit here and say he is or he isn't. But you have to remember that Pan's teacher in the movie was also designed by him, and she looks more realistic as well there, and less of a caricature. So I think Toriyama has evolved past, you know, some of the jokes that he made back in the 80s, which some would say would be insensitive. I leave that up to you, but ultimately I like these designs a lot because they resemble other comic book characters, and that's a cool homage either way. So anyways, in the Japanese, these new friends are named Lula and Compass, and they become this arc's sharpener and eraser from the Grey Sandman arc. Now, there's a line here about Trunks becoming the next president of Capsule Corp. And I find that very interesting because that's a storyline that was in place in Dragon Ball GT. I don't recall that ever being mentioned in the original Dragon Ball manga. It was GT that portrayed Trunks as being this sort of, I guess, you know, bored president of capsule corp he wasn't really into it um and here we have it so i wonder if that was a little homage to gt and to who trunks would become toyo taro loves to put easter eggs and homages to dragon ball in his mangas as well as now other superhero titles so that's cool anyways they have this little test of courage thing going on where they want to go to butterfly mountain to deal with ghosts and we have one of the dumber lines here because Trunks is saying that he's afraid of ghosts. Well, no, he's bored, but in reality, he's afraid of ghosts. That doesn't work for a couple reasons. Number one, he's actually seen a ghost before. When Goku came back to Earth for one day, he had a halo over his head, and thus that kind of makes him a ghost. Secondly, he's died before, namely in the Boo saga, killed by Boo when he blew up the planet. And third, when he's Gotenks, he creates ghosts with the super ghost kamikaze attack this was a very very dumb line that i did not like and i know some folks are probably going to be okay with it i did not like this line yo so after school trunks and goten go play a video game called clean god and we're introduced to this new fictional in-universe superhero named clean god he has movies and comics and whatnot and they have a discussion about going to see a movie with clean god but then trunk says that he wants to go with my instead okay i gotta cut in for just a moment here he actually goes back to the laboratory to ask my out for a movie let me just get this out of the way this whole trunks is in love with my storyline it's getting long in the tooth in battle of gods when pilaf and the gang were revealed to be kids and later we found out that they became kids on accident wishing to be younger Pilaf and Mai and Shu's interactions with Trunks were funny. It's a one-note joke for the film. And I think for Battle of Gods, it was fine. It worked. Then, as Dragon Ball Super progressed, we got into the future Trunks arc and the Goku Black portion of the story, and there we saw that Mai and Trunks were kind of an item in the future timeline. Now, the issue that I have with this is how weird it is, because you have to remember that Mai... She's older than Bulma. Mai is older than Bulma, who is Trunks' mother, and she's basically an adult trapped in a kid's body. Now, Trunks, as a kid, develops a crush on her, and that's fine because that happens all the time. Kids crush on adults all the time, and then the adult has to be the responsible one and give them the bad news. It's a normal thing that kids go through sometimes. Not every kid, but you hear these stories. Mai reciprocating this is basically a 40 year old woman flirting with or being attracted to a child and that's weird to me now i'm not gonna sit there and become this fake woke activist who's offended i'm not that dude man this is a freaking cartoon there are way 
bigger issues to get offended at. And canceling Toriyama is one of the dumbest things you can do because he doesn't care, number one. And number two, it's just a silly storyline. But either way, whether you think this is cute or you think it's creepy, I'm... I'm now going down creepy territory at this point. And I also am bored of it because by now, why haven't Pilaf, Shu, and Mai asked Bulma to use the Dragon Balls to wish them to be adult again? Why is this not happening? It seems like it's been years since... No, it doesn't seem like. It has been years since Battle of Gods and this whole Pilaf storyline began. And they're still going on with it? They really need to move past this. And no, for the record, when Mai became a kid, it didn't erase her memories. She didn't, like, forget that she had over 40, now probably over 50 years of life. I did a video once called How Old Is My going into all of this. So go check that video out as well during the Trunks arc when that was airing. So I feel like at this point, dude, this Trunks and My storyline needs to go. That's just my honest opinion. So then we find out that from Shu, there are rumors going around that there's people who have been appearing at night modifying robots from Capsule Corp to basically malfunction and trunks wants to catch them for my the 50 year old woman stuck in a teenager's body you know what let me show you all what would happen if my really did have a thing for trunks Yeah, so that's how it would be. I want to thank Star Blast Studios for lending me that clip that he edited because I thought it was funny as hell. But you get my point, man. This ship is so forced. Let's move on. Oh, and I also forgot to tell you that earlier, there was a dude with a hot dog. He gave it to Trunks who looks just like the dude from the Dragon Ball GT Goku Jr. special with the mustache and the, the hat. I don't even know what's up with these GT tributes, but hey, whatever. Not a big deal. It's just a fun reference. So Trunks and Goten go out at night to try to investigate what's going on with the ghost sightings and the zombie stuff and all that. And Trunks talks about how he's trying to cope with all this, that, you know, he's a scientist, so he can't believe in ghosts. But Goten reminds him that both Goku and Vegeta both died and came back as ghosts. Like, dude, <laughs> it's, it's such a weird joke or whatever. But anyways, moving on. They end up following a car to Butterfly Mountain. And once again, we have Trunks being a coward, which once again doesn't make any sense. This is the same dude who, at eight years old, was put up against Majin Buu. Like, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't like it. It's probably the worst aspect of this manga chapter, yo. I'm not a fan of it. So, anyways, they find a bunch of robots that were reprogrammed to work at this sort of mystery location, this kind of mystery factory or whatever the case is. And what ends up happening is these um, like modified sort of universal monster type of monsters or characters, zombies, I guess you can call them, show up. Like they have like a mummy, like these different sort of tributes to classic monsters. They show up, and so Goten and Trunks have to go into action. Trunks becomes Saiyan Man X1, and then we find out that his friends, like Compass, show up, and Trunks saves Compass, but the zombies keep going, and Trunks has to be a hero to save them. This was all cool stuff, had no issue with that at all, and what ends up happening is Trunks has to transform into a Super Saiyan because his body's been modified to be strong enough, but before then, Trunks loses his costume because it times out and he's revealed to be Trunks to his friends. So now his friends know that Saiyan Man X1 is Trunks. That secret identity thing did not last very long. So Goten manages to like knock the lights out and take everybody out and he tries to convince his friends that they were just hallucinating and that the ghosts must have been the ones doing it. All of this to hide Trunks' identity as Saiyan Man X1. So Trunks goes Super Saiyan and beats the leader and he finds a safe and he finds a data disc that's labeled Dr. Garo. Now, Dr. Garo is, of course, Jero in the dub and the grandfather of Dr. Hedo. And we know that Dr. Hedo 
was able to design cell max based on blueprints and schematics of the original cell. Now, we don't know about the gammas yet, but we do know that at least cell max came from an original design. So obviously this information, or at least I would think this information would be how to design cell or something similar to it. We have Krillin showing up for the first time in quite some time as a cop after he got a report about some moving corpses in the area, some zombies in the area. And we find out that these bodies were stolen from the morgue. Now this is again addressed in Dragon Ball Super Super here at the beginning of the film as we find out that Dr. Hedo was arrested for, I guess in a way, reanimating dead bodies and bringing them back to life. Now when I say reanimating, I don't mean like, you know, like an animator drawing a piece of art, you know, or whatever. I mean like the movie reanimator, taking dead bodies and bringing them back to life. And we actually see Dr. Hedo at some point later show up to the factory at Butterfly Mountain and he notices that all of the alpha soldiers have been knocked to the ground. So before he makes gammas, these must be the alpha models. And what ends up happening is Dr. Hedo finds the school badge that Trunks goes to and that could lead to him trying to get back the Dr. Garo disc that is now missing. Now it was revealed at Jump Festa that... These events right now that we're witnessing with Dr. Hedo take place nine months before the events of Dragon Ball Super Super Hero because if you remember, Dr. Hedo was locked up for about eight months. So Victory Uchida would go on to say that this is going to tell the story of how Dr. Hedo got arrested originally, which leads to Magenta breaking him out at the beginning of Dragon Ball Super Super Hero. So to me, that all makes perfect sense. So what ends up happening is... Trunks goes back to the laboratory to go see Mai, but Pilaf tells him that a lot of broken helper robots were collected from Butterfly Mountain and they have to fix them or they can't go to sleep. So Trunks then realizes it was him who damaged the robot. So what is on the disc that Trunks found? That is your cliffhanger for the next manga chapter. So I did like that they changed things up here. It was a very long manga chapter, 55 pages. I can't remember a Dragon Ball Super chapter being that long. Lots of content to make up for the last three months. I thought the stuff was fun, but a bit too derivative from the Grey Sandman arc. I want Dragon Ball to go in new directions, not keep repeating the same thing over and over again. And it really is feeling that way. However, I do appreciate some of the new characters. And I do appreciate that Dr. Hedo's story might be expounded upon here. Overall, this manga chapter is the beginning of a new arc. I can't really judge it like I would say something from the Moro or Granola arcs. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, I'll tell you that. But at the same time, if every manga arc ends up being just like this one, I'm going to get bored fast. So I am hoping that they give Sandman X1 and 2 new adventures, new enemies, new mysteries to solve like Batman would to make this thing interesting. I hope it's not just saving random robberies and jewelry stores while Hedo makes androids. That's not what I want. And I want to know what is on the Dr. Garrow disc. We'll find out soon. With that being said, thanks for watching. Take care. If you like this video, check these out as well.